This is News from the Water and I'm Peter Underwood. As our waterways attempt to get back to normal and boaters of all persuasions begin to travel in the June sunshine, the Canal and River Trust is struggling to dig itself out from an avalanche of complaints and protests. Not only were there twice as many canals where navigation has been halted because of incidents and structural failures than in previous years, 14 in just the first two days of June, but two major boating organisations are demanding that the Trust delay the implementation of its latest terms and conditions on the basis that the consultation was flawed and possibly illegal. At the same time, a less than subtle attempt to restrict boats on the River Lee is creating a growing protest bandwagon. Now, the National Association of Boat Owners has written to the Trust complaining that it's made no effort to respond to the detailed points it raised six months earlier on the proposed terms and conditions. The letter points out that the revised T's and C's are materially different than the 2015 terms as well as different from those that were consulted upon. The fact that these revised terms have not been consulted upon and were introduced with six days notice is insulting to boaters according to NABO. It also says that CRT has offered no explanation of the legal basis of some of the more controversial changes and in particular NABO remains concerned over the Trust's continued attempts to give itself powers not granted to it by the 1995 Waterways Act and yet it complains boaters have no choice but to agree to them. The NABO letter spells out that the 1995 Act makes clear the responsibilities of boats with or without home moorings the trust revisions would appear to agree with only one aspect of this and with no clear explanation as to why the Act shouldn't apply in its entirety. The Act refers of course to one licence, yet the Trust has now created two distinct licences depending on whether you have a home mooring or not. Now, NABO Chair Dr Mike Rod concludes that NABO cannot support the introduction of the amended revised terms until the Trust has explained the legal basis for them and he calls for a delay in their introduction. And then the National Bargy Travellers Association has now sent a second pre-action legal protocol letter to CRT. The legal warning contests the way the consultation was carried out online contests the new clause establishing two types of license which wasn't consulted upon at all and the apparent decision to ignore and override the 1995 law. The NBTA says that new matters have been imposed in the terms and conditions without consultation in a clear and obvious breach of the consultation principles and accuses CRT of an unlawful attempt to reinterpret Section 17 of the 1995 Act, which is unlawful. The legal letter demands that CRT withdraws the new terms and conditions and carries out a proper consultation and asks for a response within a week. News on the Water asked CRT for a response to the actions of both NABO and NBTA in rejecting the terms and conditions. National Press Officer Fran Reid replied by stonewalling, saying, in quotes, we, we, we will communicate directly with NABO and the NBTA about any matters they raise, and we'd recommend that you approach them about any questions they may have raised. <laughs> yeah. On another front, Canal and River Trust has finally responded, after a fashion, to Alan Richards' formal complaint that it revised the figures in its annual report after it had been accepted by the board and provided a different version to the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs as well as the Charity Commission at more than 20 days after the original complaint and well outside its own deadlines for a response Alan has now had an email from Tom Deards, CRT's Head of Legal and Governance Services which claims, uh, 
I should be in a position to provide you with a full substantive response by the end of next week. Isn't that lovely? Then there's of course the wave of protest over the so-called safety zones on the River Lee, which has already led to the Canal and River Trust backing down and organising a proper consultation with all river users, rather than just one or two rowing clubs. London boaters, led by the National Bargy Travellers Association, are now organising their third public protest event over two days in mid-June. A convoy of boats with live acts on board will be moving from Walthamstone marshes, marshes to Hackney Wick and back and supporters will march alongside on the towpath. There will be stalls on the towpath and an afternoon gathering at Walthamstone marshes for discussion of the uh, safety zones, live music, a boater's circus show and children's activities. Somehow it seems that wherever Canal and River Trust attempts to exceed the law, it is met by vigilant boaters who have decided it shall not be allowed to grab new powers without a fight. Cooperation creates a community. On a much more peaceful note, a group of boaters has been able to work together to create a mooring space in an industrial wilderness, one of the many nooks and crannies that exist in various parts of the West Midlands Canal system and indeed in other urban areas. Urban Moorings is a community-based project providing spaces for the boating and local community to use on what was a derelict scrap of land jointly owned by Canal and River Trust and Wolverhampton Council. They say that they've just begun to open up to visitors and volunteers when the, the nasty little virus struck a little while back and they had to close their gates. But at the end of this May, Urban Moorings held an open day for all comers. When the original volunteers arrived back in November 2016, the site was totally overgrown and covered in rubbish. The next three years were spent clearing the site of badlier, car parts, rubble and rubbish, as well as developing the CRT-owned part of the site. There they created garden areas as well as areas for wildflowers to increase the biodiversity and removed underwater obstructions from the arm and built a walkway around the mainline canal area for secure boat moorings. Unfortunately, on Boxing Day 2018, the team lost one of its founding members, Paul Howland, when he died suddenly. It's absolutely amazing. I came here just after the Alison and Lou had moved here and now you wouldn't believe the difference. It, it's a proper community. If I had a boat this is where I'd want to be. The team is now looking to restore the boathouse as a community space and history, history centre along with the associated toll house opening up the view onto an old stop block which is adjacent to it on the Worley and Essington Canal, Curly Worley as most people know it. Our urban moorings want to take the uh, self-sufficiency of living on a boat, generating power, getting water, emptying toilets, rubbish disposal and share this with land-based dwellers. They say we want to create a space where difference and different ideas are the norm. We want spaces where we can share the canal folk way of looking at things. We want people to explore and learn about the rich industrial history of the site and the area around it. We want to be an eco-zero waste site, putting an emphasis on reusing waste in imaginative and inventive ways. We want to show it is possible to reclaim once polluted and derelict sites with little commercial potential and regenerate them as community and creative sites. We want to integrate with nature and have it as an everyday experience on our site. We want to encourage the community to plant and garden on whatever scale they're able at the site 
and a term. We want to give a space to experiment with the arts and provide a flexible space to do so. We want to provide a space for the community to engage with exhibitions and performance. We want to provide a space for micro-businesses to operate on a flexible basis and share ideas. And of course, self-sufficient moorings integrated into the community that surrounds it, other, using otherwise derelict small basins and arms in an urban area would provide a lot of mooring solutions in other urban areas. Urban moorings is a fascinating idea and we wish them all the very best. That's it for this week. Bye.